You, you, you are now listening to the project. To the project. To the project. Where we stop at nothing to bring you the right facts on health, fitness, and psychology. Featuring some of the world's most experienced professional professionals. So you can learn, lift, and live with your hosts, Meg, Dr. D, and Mandy. The only reason why I knew what ADHD was when I was 17, 18 years old is because one of my buddies was like, yeah, guys, apparently I have something called ADHD and they gave me this stuff called Ritalin and it, you know, it, it's been helping me. He's like, I'm a different person when I take this shit. And when I'm off of it, I'm bouncing off the walls. I feel like when an adult says, oh, no, depression doesn't really exist. Okay, if it doesn't exist and someone is suffering from certain symptoms, like, well, you know, the depression symptoms that we all know. What do we call that? I want to know. What do you call it? Okay, let's forget about it. it's called depression. So I'm oversleeping. I'm crying. I have a sense of sadness. What do you call that? All this and more in today's episode. In this episode, Dr. D, you haven't mentioned the background on Zoom at all. <laughs> I was wondering, why do you have that like palm peach kind of like a beachy palm kind trees. of? I get, yeah, I get the palm trees and the beach. <laughs> What's up with this? Do you know my students? A lot of them have this. The other day I was on a Zoom call with my friend in Florida. I mean, she's already in Florida. Why does she have this background? Can you tell me why do people do backgrounds? I don't know. I know DJ <laughs> does this. Okay. And I question what DJ's doing in class with Haya as she questions me <laughs> all the time. But to be honest, like, I don't know how to turn it off. Oh, you don't know how to turn it off? I can teach you that. How do, how do I don't turn it off. You, I have no there clue. There is a place there. You go, go to your stop video on the left hand side and then you choose virtual background. Yeah. Oh, okay. I see where it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's all right. We're going to go with this back. But I like seeing you. I see that you can choose whatever. I like space. I like space. My students use space a lot. They use that Palm Beach kind of thing. Yeah. And what else do they use? But the space a lot with students. I wonder why. Why do they want to be in space? Space is really cool. You look cool. Maybe I should do one. Wait, I should do one too. For me, it's like, you know, when you move, it shows, right? Yeah, I know you're right. And that's what I really don't like about it. Speaking of, I have a question for you. So if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Superpower. One superpower. What would it be? I mean, Hayes was like speaking any language that she could speak. I like yours. You got the uh, Northern Lights behind you. I like that. This that's good? a good background. You like this? Yeah, oh, I like the Northern. Like it's it. Northern Lights. You know, that's on my bucket list. I want to see the Northern Lights before I die. Like people say it's amazing. Mm. And yeah, that's something I really want. One superpower. Uh, superpower. I want to be able to know what everyone's thinking. Ooh, that's dangerous, though. That's really dangerous. No, no, I, I definitely like I don't want to be guessing. I want to be able when I'm speaking to you that I get these signals that says exactly what this person means. That's so weird. Because I'm so sick of these people that are passive aggressive or <laughs> that they say something and they mean something else. This will be great. You know who said this? They would want the same exact superpower as you. My mother. <laughs> <laughs> yep, my mother said that's what the one superpower she wanted. I, the only thing I said to her was, "Why do you even care?" Like, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> it would be fun. Nobody will speak to you because they'll know you can read it. Or I could be like, you know, turn everything to uh, a frozen, where you can turn everything to oh, like, like a freeze. You freeze everyone. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Everyone, like I can get rid of. Oh, I know. Where anytime somebody I don't like, I can get rid of them, freeze them, stop them, mute them. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, that would, can you imagine how many people I can freeze in a day? Really? All these students getting on my nerves, freeze. Oh, you don't have like an automatic mute button in your head? Like with people, when, when I'm sick of somebody, I just have this automatic mute button. And Haya knows when I stop listening and I'm just like totally not even paying attention. I have an automatic mute button. You need one of those. I know, but then that people can tell you've muted them and they like, are you with me? Do you understand what I'm saying? But if like, if you kind of like can do it and have them just stop, physically stop, then you don't have to deal with them realizing that you've checked out. Yeah, but you wouldn't want to fly or like this little kid today, um, DJ's little friend, Bay. I asked her and she goes, first she said she wanted to make money or she said she wanted a healing power. Oh, that's nice. 
Yeah, she wanted a healing power. Oh, that's cute. DJ, I don't know what he said. He wanted to be a plumber. <laughs> Super Mario Brothers. It's like, okay. I don't know why no one wants fly. Like, I want to fly. Wouldn't you want to fly? You want to fly everywhere. Flying's awesome. Flying's like, the, and especially now. Well, I always say that when in another life, if you believe in that, I want to be a cat. A, I can have seven lives. I can jump everywhere <laughs> and I can be whatever I want and I'll never have to be committed. Unless you're in the house. Cats suck, though. Cats are useless. Cats are absolutely... Oh, my God. You can't they, train exactly. a cat. You can't train them. I don't have to think. I can litter, eat. Sometimes people can play with me and, like, you know... <laughs> or they then can I'll scratch their me. faces and off. And the rest of the time, I can be anywhere. Under the couch, by the window. No one can tell me what to do. We're actually looking for a dog. We were going to get a cat, and... Now we're thinking of getting a dog. There is a litter of dogs down the street, you know, stray dogs, because we're, you know, we're in the middle of nowhere. Uh. And we went over. We sat there for about an hour waiting for one of them to come up to us. We had treats and stuff, and they were just way too scared. They wouldn't come anywhere near. So uh, we're on the fence. Wait, wait. I have a friend. She um, fosters dogs. So I can give you her number and you, she can get you to, she has a lot of dogs. Oh, that's awesome. That's great. Yes. That is awesome. Because DJ really wants a puppy. And Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, it would be nice because there's a lot to foster. And I think this is great. Like, it's like, it really annoys me when people buy dogs or cats. Because I feel like there's so much that we can foster. Yeah. And I think you should foster them. I still think cats are absolutely useless. I do love dogs. Dogs are great animals. I actually did like cats when I was a kid, but. After that, I stopped liking the cats. But I just adopted a cat and I love, yeah. I, you know, I'm not a, really a pet person. It's the first time I've adopted a cat and I really feel connected. Oh, that's really cool. You know, I have friends that are really, really connected to their pets. I mean, I understand it, but I don't really understand it. It's the first time I got a cat or I got a, a pet where I feel like so connected to it. Like I feel like his eyes are saying something. Maybe he is a soul of somebody. I don't know. Like, you know, there are people that believe that they're, you know, especially those that believe in reincarnation, right? So I asked my friend, I'm like, is it like funny that you feel like this pet is talking to you? His eyes are like saying something to you. And she's like, no, this is when you feel emotionally connected to your pet. So, you know, I'm feeling it. That's deep. That's deep, Dr. I, know, I mean, I personally like still think cats are absolutely useless. I said that on air. Oh, cat God. lovers who listen to our show are going <laughs> to hate me. What true. do they do? They don't do oh, anything. They don't do anything. They, they don't need to cats do Cats don't do nothing. You can train a duck. You can't train a cat. All right. You can actually train a that duck. That is not true. But they're so self-sufficient. That's why I want to be a cat in another life. But a dog shows you emotion. A dog shows you love. He'll come up to you, lick your face. So does a cat. I swear to you, if you have a cat. See, I was like you until you got a cat. I always wanted a dog. And then I feel like dog takes a lot of time. Like you got to get up in the morning, walk them. You know, and we had a, a dog and then we send them to the U.S. Because I felt like the kids couldn't take care of him. And I was like really busy. The cat are so self-sufficient. You can actually go out, you know, give them their food, close the door, and you don't have to worry about them. He cleans himself. He, the best time, oh my God, the best time is when I'm getting ready in the morning and I have music on and he's just sitting waiting for me. I've never had anyone wait for me with that passionable eyes, like he loves me. And he's just listening to my music. Oh my God. Oh my God. I feel like, oh, even my kids don't sit and wait for me like he does. All right. So you're a psychologist. And before we dive into your story today, what is people's emotional connection with animals, especially dogs, when they say, oh, my God, having a puppy is like having an actual child. It is not having a child. It's true. It is very different than having an actual child. No, it's better than having a child. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's better You're than having a child. Oh, my God. <laughs> a puppy is better than having. I love it, Dr. D. Love, I love it. I, love I don't it. have to change them. I don't have to worry about their school. I'm sending this clip to Larson. I'm sending this <laughs> clip to Larson. All right. I'm throwing you under the bus. I don't have to hear mom. You should see Larson. Mom, I have an issue. Is there a day this kid doesn't have an issue? Come on. <laughs> and they're like, mom. And I'm like, you know, when you have a whole long day, you just want a pet where you can just pet it. It sits on your lap when I'm on the phone or on the couch. It doesn't do anything. Earlier today, I was taking a nap. It comes and it just wants to sleep with me. Does not have to bother me with mom. Can you do this? Mom, can you hear this? Mom, what should I do about this? Seriously. 
No, 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 no. It's so, so, it's so nice. I think you need to get it back. Would that qualify as, you know, we say passive aggressive all the time. Would that qualify as passive affectionate or passive affection? Is that a new term? Did I invent a new psychological term? No, just affection. I, I had to But that's are. passive You're affection. Get out I, of did, your head. I did. I invented that term. Affection. I'll put that in Urban Dictionary. And it's unconditional love. Do you know what? My pet only needs me to buy him food. It's so unconditional love. But it's passive. They don't know any better. They're animals. They don't know any better. No, that is not true. No, what I realize is that he's closer to me than the other members in this family. <laughs> and actually, Larsa is very jealous because actually I adopted the kitty for her because she's been missing her brother. And the other day she says to me, mom, it is supposed to be my kitty. Why does he follow you everywhere? Why does he always want to see you? Why this? I think, no, 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 no. I think they sense, <laughs> just like a kid, they know which adult is very loving, which adult they should, you know, not hang out with. They really know I'm serious. All right. I was so shocked until I got my cat. I was like, wow. I mean, I- when I see Larsa, I'm going to give her a tip. Okay. And I don't know if they have it in Kuwait, but I'm going to tell her to get some catnip, put it in her pocket. And just leave a trail of catnip, all right? And then the cat will follow her wherever she goes, all right? Like, oh, that's awesome. That's good that you got a cat. Look, I'm really happy for you. You know, my kids love me, but I feel like a lot of times it's like, mom, what can you buy me? What can you do me? I've been trying to teach them to be a lot more unconditional, but this cat doesn't ask me for anything. He is the only thing in my life that I don't have to put out anything, seriously, where I can just be the human being. There was research that suggested having a pet like a cat, not a dog, a cat was good psychologically for you. Like, you know, it stopped depression. Yes. It held off on anger. And yes. It, it's an extra serotonin. Yeah. And, yes. and it petting it. Yes. It was the equation of petting the cat was released yes. small doses, which I find interesting and fascinating, to be honest with you. No. And I think this research that you're saying There is this research that says for elderly, for example, Mm -hmm. especially right now with COVID where people cannot, you know, when they cannot be visited by their family members, most of the ones that want, you know, if they have a pet then they feel a lot more, you know, less isolated than the ones that don't have a pet, for example. That makes sense. So even nursing homes at one time, they were having, I was reading this article, I don't know, in Florida where the nursing homes, they would have visitors from that, from a person that fosters pets. And they would like have these visits with these elderly in a nursing home once a week where they would bring pets like cats and they would have the elderly just, you know, hang out with these cats. And they noticed that their emotions were much more positive on that day when they were really, when they were petting the pet or having some sort of activities using some pet exercises. I think it's amazing. That makes sense. I have a friend, her mom is in a nursing home and she used to have a cat and the cat died and then the husband died. So now she's in mourning and you know what they did? They brought her a robot cat because she's suffering from Alzheimer's and she cannot take care of a cat. So they did two things. One, that they have a robot cat where she can at least pet it and it says meow. The second thing they did is they hired this person. She will bring a cat once a week and she will feed the cat and have the cat hang out with her mom where she can have an opportunity to have her own cat, but have somebody take care of it. Oh, that's really, that's a smart idea. That says a lot, right? That does say a lot. It's almost like people and going out and running into teenagers that you dislike, but you know, you can give cats back, especially if they come and visit once a week, but you can't give kids away. Now you wanted to talk about your experience that happened recently at a social event Yes. Which was the misplacement of social labels and the misuse of social labels brought up by someone else, right? Yes. So, Dr. D, take the floor and go. (laughs) Yes. Because you are pissed. Okay, so I have to tell you this story because, well, I was pissed, but someone else was more pissed than me. And I was thinking that, I was wondering today, like, why does this really bother me? It bothered me a whole time. So anyways, I'm invited to a barbecue, which is fine. A lot of people, whatever. I mean, not a lot of people, small gathering, like five or six people, but I was thinking that, so there was a teenager or, you know, yeah, teenager, seven year old, 17, I mean. So what I wanted to tell you today is like something that really resonates with me a lot of times with people when they talk about psychological labels or, you know, disorders. So this kid, I will call him a kid. He is 17 years old. I don't know. We were talking and the 17 year old said a statement that really, really ticked me. But of course, you know, I was trying to like 
preserve myself. And I don't understand, like there's a couple of doctors there, or at least, you know, there were psychologists. And in this setting, this person says, uh, you know what? I think you guys' diagnosis is not really real. That re- there is nothing that exists that's called ADHD or bipolar or depression. And then I was like, okay, so if these things don't exist, would you say the same thing to someone that has diabetes, for example, or someone that has high blood pressure, or cholesterol, or, or even cancer, right? And he's like, no, that's different. And I said, but what you don't understand is that a lot of these diagnoses have an effect psychologically and mentally. I mean, forget about if we're talking about depression, but let's say someone that has diabetes. They also, there's a lot of research that says diabetes has an effect on you physically, obviously, and it also has an impact on your mental health or mental wellness. And the idea is that what really pisses me off, he was able to understand not just him, I'm not just talking about him, but it kind of triggered me because this is like the struggle that I have to deal with every day. And a lot of people that are in my field have to deal with is that we constantly have to prove ourselves or have to like prove our uh, field or have to be taken very serious. The idea that our diagnosis is just as reliable and valid as much as someone else that is suffering from these medical you know, illnesses. And I think the other thing that people don't understand is that this idea that you have depression, which means that depression not only impacts you mentally, impacts you socially, cognitively, physically. So people are depressed. First, they know they're depressed because physically they're feeling certain things that they didn't feel before. For example, sleeping too much or wanting to eat too much or not eating, crying, you know, aches in their body, for example. Sometimes they even like have headaches or or they want to isolate themselves. They're constantly tired. Now we're talking about like physical symptoms. And then we talk about this cognitive symptoms where their memory is bad and their concentration and, and they just feel that they can't even, you know, they've like this fog, this brain fog that they have. Well, that's also is cognitive, physical. So to say that, well, you know, you guys just give these diagnoses, they're not really valid and they're not true. And you're just using those to in order for you to kind of verify or validate what you're doing. I felt like it was like so insulting and to also have it come from somebody so young. And also to say that when they don't know who's sitting around, who's has a diagnosis, who's been taking medication, you know, who's depressed within this group to people to make a, an, an assumption that, you know, that you're not really, you know, I mean, I don't know. I felt like he was trying to say, well, you're not really real and you're not valid as if like I do Budo or, you know, like psyche, you know, someone like saying, well, you know, you know, when you go to, if you're ever going to a psyche or people that believe in these things, the first thing I say, well, these are not real. Or someone that says, I really believe in astrology and I really believe in this, like to me, I'm like, that's not even real. Like I dismiss it right away, right? So this person to dismiss right away, what are you talking about? ADHD doesn't really exist. And you know, mental health, a lot of these disorders doesn't exist. And, and to kind of like, in a way, kind of like, I felt like he was dismissing me, dismissing people that have it, dismissing anything that I believe in. I really felt, really, really felt hurt. I don't know if hurt, angry. The other person that was with me, she was even more angry. She exploded and she said, what are you talking about? And, you know, you have no right to say these things. And there was like this, like this sense of like tension that you can see, which I feel like, why do I have to suffer this kind of tension? While if it was somebody that was a medical doctor who was talking about any medical thing, you know, nobody would have just jumped in there and said, oh, you don't know what you're talking about or no, 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 that disease doesn't exist. No, 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 this is not real. No one ever does that. But why do they have the right to do it to us or to psychologists or psychiatrists? To me, I felt like whatever, you know, this person is probably projecting a lot of things and I was cool about it. But still, it's he's not the only one that I constantly feel I have to defend my idea and to defend my diagnosis and to defend why people suffer certain things. And if people can just think of our diagnosis and disorders, partly physical, partly mental, maybe they will start to get it. I don't know, to be honest. No, I mean, it, it makes sense. And I look at that age, you know, like I can remember when I was 17 and, you know, the beliefs that I had and everything. It, like, yeah, 17 year olds are going to piss you off. You know, teenagers in general are going to piss people off. But I don't think I think he was just saying what really the mainstream you know, people say, I don't think that he was just saying it because he was 17 as much as like dismissing it, you know, and as of like, you know, if he did have ADHD or if he did have depression, 
he would just shrug it off and say, oh, you know, these things don't exist. As if like, you know, I'm just talking to him about what to eat. You know, what do you eat for breakfast? But it depends on the teenager. I mean, like I grew up in an era where it was like if you came out and said you had, you know, you, you suffered from depression in high school, for instance, you know, you would be demonized. You know, like that to us, to my generation was your weak. It's just weak. Why? But, you know, it's not just your generation. It still exists and continues. Why? I mean, we're talking about 21th century, your generation. It's the education level, though. It's the education level. When you look at it, when you're 17, 18, you know, I mean, you're not really thinking of the psychological factors that someone can undergo during their life from trauma to anything. And you're not really putting those things in perspective. You're thinking if you're an 18-year-old or a 17-year-old jock playing baseball, soccer, football, whatever sport you're playing, and someone comes in and says, oh, I suffer from depression. First thing that you're saying as you know, a typical 17-year-old, okay, typical 17-year-old, we're not talking smart 17-year-old, typical 17-year-old, you're going to be like, that person's weak. That's the mentality that a lot of 17-year-olds have. No, I disagree with you because I think nowadays, maybe at your time or my time, people didn't talk about that. I mean, my time was a long time ago, and I even had, we had one student in our high school who committed suicide, and probably because he was bullied a lot. I mean, I didn't know the kid that well, but, you know, probably got a lot of rejection, you know, so probably didn't have a lot of friends. But no, I think now we're spending a lot more time being educated. People have more access to social media platforms. There are lots of people and even famous people and and really influencers that come out and say, you know, I have depression or anxiety. And you and I know a lot of people have talked about that. I don't really think so. And I, to, to be honest, I think this person is diagnosed with ADHD or even bipolar. See, that's another thing is, is like, I could see that he's diagnosed with these things. And maybe this is part of him rejecting his own diagnosis by trying to putting it out there, by making it look like, no, they don't exist. And, you know, you guys are just creating this. There is nothing called that ADHD. This is just behavior. Well, no. I mean, the reason why we have certain diagnoses because it's not every 17-year-old is diagnosed with ADHD. We have to differentiate who has ADHD and who doesn't. I feel like the idea is like people are getting educated. He is 17, but I think their 17-year-olds right now are much more knowledgeable than my time or even your time. They know these things. I don't know. I would be surprised because there is a level of maturity that comes with understanding certain diseases. The only reason why I knew what ADHD was when I was 17, 18 years old is because one of my buddies was like, yeah, guys, apparently I have something called ADHD and they gave me this stuff called Ritalin and it, you know, it, it's been helping me. He's like, I'm a different person when I take this shit. And when I'm off of it, I'm bouncing off the walls. So that means that that diagnosis does exist. But that was when I was introduced to it because one of my friends had ADHD. If I didn't know my buddy who had ADHD... I'd be like, what the fuck's ADHD? Are you kidding me? Dude, just go run around a little bit, you know, like calm yourself down. You know what? You can't control yourself. That's the old Mehdi that's 17 years old that would be thinking. If someone came to me, if a female came to me and said, oh, yeah, I'm suffering from depression. I'd be like, dude, what the hell's wrong with you? Like depression's all a state of mind. You can get out of that. Like you're just weak. No, but there's not state of mind. I'm saying that would have been my mentality as a 17 year old. There's a level of maturity, though. No, no. I'm saying even your friend that was taking Ritalin, obviously he accepted the idea that he has this particular diagnosis where he had to take Ritalin, which means that he had to accept that he's not functioning like the other 17-year-old. He's got a little bit different or specialty of some sort that other kids didn't have. No, his parents... Do you know what I'm saying? His parents forced him. <laughs> his parents forced him because he crashed two cars. He crashed two cars and then they had to get psychological evaluations to figure out what was wrong with him so that they could control him. He was uncontrollable. And they said he has ADHD. My point is, if you believe that or not believe that, speaking about it in public and saying, well, these things don't exist, is like telling someone that has cancer well, no, not really. You don't really have cancer. They've lied to you. Yeah. Right. So first of all, it's the idea is that people expressing these things when they're in a public setting, which they don't really know if there are other people around them that do have these diagnoses. So you're shunning them anyways. You're making them feel bad that they've got something that other people don't. And you're dismissing how they're feeling. You're really dismissing it as saying something like, oh, these are just labels you guys just put on people. These things don't exist. I mean, it's not just him. Like I said, it's not about him. The 17-year-old expressed certain things that I think he's got these disorders, he's denying it. But I, it's the idea that I also hear adults saying it, where 
I feel like when an adult says, oh no, depression doesn't really exist. Okay. If it doesn't exist and someone is suffering from certain symptoms, like, like, you know, the depression symptoms that we all know, what do we call that? I want to know, what do you call it? Okay. Let's forget about it's called depression. So I'm oversleeping. I'm crying. I have a sense of sadness. What do you call that? Right? Yeah. I feel like Having a diagnosis, it kind of gives you a direction, you know, it's like, a, you know, like your, your, your tracker, your guide to driving, right? It, the idea is, is that when you don't have a direction and say to this person, well, you know, you've got all these symptoms, I don't really know what they are. Yeah. They don't match any other medical stuff, but they're matching mental health stuff. I just wish people would stop making these comments in public, A, because you're making other people feel bad, B, if there is someone suffering from these symptoms and they're trying to figure it out, by you saying these things don't exist, they'll never take mental health serious. They won't take their doctor serious. So the idea is that what do you do with these things? That's what I think. I really, truly, truly believe that this is such a, a bad idea of how people really react to mental health disorders. Seriously. And I feel like we got to stop. we got to stop no, that makes trying sense. to constantly trying to find a, a label for or denying a label. It's not a label. It's a diagnosis. I don't feel like it's a label that I have to put on people. I need to tell you, you're depressed. So that way I know what that means. You know what that means and what we should do about it. Yeah. Just like diagnosing cancer or diagnosing diabetes or all the other medical disorders. No, you're right. I mean, we identify it so we can do intervention. Yeah. And validating is a really important step. And I think for everyone to validate, every, you know, other people's feelings and disorders is an important thing. And, yeah. you know, even if you're a young kid, it's very important to do. And, you know, on that note, just make sure you all validate people. Yeah, I think so. Instead of and don't piss Dr. D off. <laughs> you know, because like I said, we don't know what people have. We don't know if you're talking to someone who has depression, is taking medication. It's not right. Yeah. To, to, you know, to just give your opinion and make this person feel bad. Whatever your opinion is, keep it to yourself. Support everyone because depression, anxiety, panic attack has become more common than we think. Yep. That's it for me. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Bye. Thanks for listening to this episode. If you enjoyed it, please head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. You can also find us on Instagram at the project. Thank you. And join us next time.